On this special episode of 419 by Design, we're showing you what goes into building the iconic Jeep Wrangler. On today's episode of 419 by Design, we're going big, as in iconic big. We're showing you how Jeep built the iconic Jeep Wrangler, right here at the Toledo Assembly Complex. We got a lot of ground to cover, so let's roll. Built in 2001, this 3.64 million square foot facility sits on over 300 acres of land. Not only do they build the iconic Jeep Wrangler here, but they also build the new Gladiator as well. Hey, Lord. Hi, you must be here. Our adventure begins at the main visitor entrance. We get suited up with proper protective gear and meet with our tour guide, Lori St. Marie. Lori is the continuous improvement manager of the complex. Not much happens at the Jeep Assembly Complex that Lori doesn't know about. So I know it's a lot, but tell me what you do here at Jeep. So really I'm the continuous improvement manager for the Wrangler and the Gladiator, body shop, paint shops, assembly shops. That's it? That's all you, that's all? That's all you gotta worry about? got a great tour for you today, can't wait to show you. We'll start off in the body shop where we watch the body be welded together. From there we'll head to general assembly where we'll watch the chassis, trim, final departments and then we'll go through some functional testing. Then we'll watch it head out the door. Ready to get started? Before we start our tour, let's rewind to the beginning and learn a little bit about the history of the Wrangler from senior assembly manager Dave Coles. Dave is a 40 year veteran of Jeep. It started with the parkway, the old plan as we call it, in uh, 1904, and they were building bicycles at that time. But they grew into autos, and then in 1910, that's when Willie's Overland started to produce automobiles at the same plant, the old plant. Some of the milestones that we were able to accomplish, ours, one of them is that we produced 15 million cars, which is huge. Um, and at one time in 2015, this plant, Toledo Assembly Plant, was the second largest manufacturer of vehicles in North America. And then in 1941, the government contract came around where the Jeep was born. And uh, veterans and, and employees alike drove those into the war and, and, and a star was born. And, and people brought the Jeeps back here and they found out what four-wheel drive could do. They, they were using them in farms and, and, and it just went on from there. The Jeep continued production, has been in production every year since then. More of a civilian Jeep, as they were called, CJs. Um, and along the way, we did the Wranglers, uh, the CJs, the CJ5s, um, the senior Jeep, which was back in the 60s to the mid 80s. That was a senior Jeep, it was called SJ Short. Actually, that's where I came into production on that. And then uh, we brought the Wrangler back from Canada when it was out. The Cherokee grew here, which opened a whole new segment of four-wheel drive because it was four-wheel drive. It was a smaller vehicle for the car for the times. However, our Cherokee had four doors, and nobody else had those. And that really opened the market between the Wrangler and the Cherokee for the SUV market for what it is today. Although building a Wrangler is a linear process from start to finish, senior managers Bob Hogan and Grant Robinson explain that there's a whole lot going on at the same time. Uh, in this body shop here, it's where we transform all these stamped metal parts and components that arrive here to build a dimensionally correct body to pass on to the paint shop and to the final phase in general assembly. Okay, so the general assembly process starts when the paint shop delivers a vehicle to selectivity. At this point in time, all of the parts are broadcast so that we can be just in time for the vehicle. You have a painted body, which is going to go to the trim shop, and on the other side you have a chassis that needs to be built up on a frame. So simultaneously, the body will be going through the trim shop, being built up, while the frame will be going through chassis, getting the front axle, the rear axle, the shocks, the springs, as well as the engine. Those two processes come together at body decking, where the painted body meets the chassis, they're put together and you have a Jeep. Our tour starts at the very beginning, the stamp parts delivery loading dock. 
Just about all the parts for a Jeep Wrangler come through these doors. Thousands of parts come through this dock per day from dozens of vendors. The Jeep process of building a Jeep Wrangler begins the, um, primarily in Michigan with their stamping. Um, they're sent down by truck to uh, Toledo. Uh, there we process the vehicle. Next stop, the underbody framer and framer areas. This is where the basic skeleton of the Wrangler is put together with some of those parts we saw come in on the stamp parts dock. Our Wrangler body consists of many subcomponents that we assemble here in the body shop. It starts out with our underbody system where we join the front structure, rear ladder, and rear floor through our underbody framing application. This provides the floor pan for the base of the Wrangler. This is then transferred on to our framing station. The underbody structure meets up with the body sides in the framing station. These are placed in our framing gates and the geometry of the vehicle is set in this station. At this point, you basically have the functional shell of the body. Next up, it's time to add the doors. It's here that the doors are actually put together and added to the vehicle. First, the robots laser weld together the door frame. Then that's carried to the door body. And the inner and outer doors are laser welded together. It's at this point that they add the hood. The system tells the robots which hood goes to which model vehicle. And it's set down the line. Then workers add the hood to the Wrangler. Because tightening these bolts is so delicate, it's very important that this is done by hand. Alright Jeepers, do you know what a buzz model is? Is it A, a vintage phone in an army jeep, B, a limited edition specialty jeep, or C, a vibration detection system? The answer to that, and we continue on with our tour on 419 by Design. What's a buzz model? If you guessed limited edition model, you're right. Welcome back to 419 by Design and our special building of a Jeep Wrangler edition. Now that building the Wrangler body is complete, 
it's time to head over to assembly and the addition of one of the most recognizable parts of any Jeep. The badge and logo. Here's Continuous Improvement Manager Lori St. Marie to explain how the whole thing works. So right here we have a decline and we've got the painted bodies coming in. This is the first station where they're entering the general assembly process. And if you turn a little bit, you can see we're applying the badging at this station. The type of vehicle determines the type of badging. She'll choose it off of the station right there. Apply it to the fixture. Remove the backing. Wipe the vehicle to ensure that there's nothing that will contaminate or prevent proper adhesion. The first badge is applied and then there's a special pressurized fixture that makes sure that it's attached to the vehicle and won't come off. Uh, they're all different? Or is there a, do you go there are thing? a lot of different badges. You can see every one of those slots up there is a different badge based upon the type of vehicle. Yep, you can see the buttons that are in front there, they'll light up so that she knows which one to pick. So it's error mistake proofing to help her understand what type of vehicle is in station and which badge she needs to apply. Now on to one of the more unique working environments in all the plants, the rotating carrier. The body enters the assembly center and you can see that we have the rotated carriers otherwise known as a rotisserie and what we're doing is making it more ergonomically friendly for the operator. You can see they have their material in a kit so that's everything they need to perform the operations for this specific vehicle. As it gets farther down the line, it'll rotate the other direction, so it allows the operator to be able to place the parts in a more ergonomically friendly atmosphere rather than reaching up or bending way over. Moving on through assembly, it's time to add some of the more important things to a Jeep user. The instrument panel and that iconic front end. Instrument panel, dashboard, well, we call it the instrument panel. As you can see, robot assisted workers put in the instrument panel all in one piece. The Wrangler features one of the most iconic and recognizable front ends in all of automotive history. And right here is where they put it on. Alright, this looks familiar to me here. Yep. What am I looking at? It's the most iconic portion of the Jeep. It's the seven slot grill. Now that the front end module has been installed just two stations down, they apply the seven slot grill to the Wrangler. I bet you get a lot of a lot of media right here. It's a, lot, a very, a lot, very a lot popular station. <laughs> Another important step, and something that most Toledoans can relate to, windshields. Okay, you can see the glass, the windshield glass advancing on the conveyor. When the glass is loaded at the beginning of the conveyor, primer is placed on it, and it has flash time and dries. The robot just moved into position above the windshield where it'll be applying the urethane. 
So it's beginning the process of applying a bead of urethane. It started at the top of the windshield, applying the appropriate width as well as height with no gaps or skips in the urethane. Now it's getting back to the point that it started. It'll overlap by a bit. And we use the urethane to help ensure that there's no wind noise, water intrusion, and that it sticks and adheres to the vehicle. So now that it's picked it up, it's placing it in a fixture where it'll wait for the load robot to pick it up as it is right now. It's checking position with the lights on the cameras. Now it'll utilize suction cups to pick it up and take it over to the vehicle where it's decked to the vehicle and the appropriate pressure is applied for the appropriate length of time to ensure that it's properly adhered. All right, Jeep aficionados, do you remember what year the current Jeep plant was built? Was it A, 1986, B, 2001, or C, 1994? The answer to that, and we'll continue on with our building of a Jeep Wrangler tour after the break on 419 by Design. When was the current Jeep plant built? If you guessed 2001, you're right. Welcome back to 419 by Design and our special building of a Jeep Wrangler edition. The next stop on our tour is something brand new to the Wrangler family. Just because the Wrangler's been around for a long time, doesn't mean it can't keep up with the times. Case in point, the Wrangler 4xE. It's right here where they install the battery for any 4xE coming down the line. So here we have one of the new Wrangler 4xEs, which is the new plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And she's placing the battery into the vehicle, and it's all servo-driven. And if she holds the buttons down, it actually places it in the appropriate location for her to ensure that it's decked to the vehicle and able to be installed properly. Although the 4xE is the future, most current Jeeps are still going with the classic motor. It's time to learn how they build that engine. Next stop, the engine line. So we're on the engine line right now. You can see the orange cart underneath is carrying all the parts that are needed to build up that specific powertrain, that specific engine. We treat our operators like a surgeon. We try to avoid non-value added walk. So we have the limos where he's gaining his fasteners and his tools. And when he moves over to the engine, all of the parts that he needs have been kitted and are right underneath the engine so that he can perform the buildup without having to walk and he can perform the more value added elements. This allows him to complete his job within cycle time and allows us to have the space to put the appropriate material in that station for him. So each, each one of these has different parts down there? Yep, we have 11 different powertrains that we build. So to eliminate the choice for the operator and ensure that we can put all the material in the station, we place them on the kit, which as you can see is attached to the carrier and moves with the engine all the way down the line. These massive robots are putting the chassis into position and getting them ready for engine load when the engine is loaded onto the chassis. Alright, tell us what we got going on here. Okay, right here we're at engine 
engine load, you saw the buildup of the engine over on the engine line, and it's sent over on a conveyor system to the chassis line. And you can see that it's right there, and it's going to index over and be installed to that next chassis. So once it's in the appropriate position, the AGV or Automated Guided Vehicle will stop. And you can see they'll lower the hoist down. And then they'll begin the secure process. Our tour continues. We're now at the point where it all comes together. Body decking. So right now we're at the body decking. This is one of the most exciting locations in General Assembly. When you're building in General Assembly, you're building two simultaneous builds. You have the body being built up in the trim shop, and you have the chassis building up the suspension and the engine. And this is the point where they're both married together. So the correct chassis and the correct body will be married together. You can see the orange carrier picking it up. And the gantry is about to lower and deck that to the chassis. And once it's fully down, you'll start to see spindles coming up from the bottom to secure it. You see those so this come is like up? The, this is like the all the sides of the house meeting together. This is both sides of the house coming together. And after this, it'll move on to final assembly to receive seats, tires, hard tops, and have some testing performed. As you've seen, robots and machinery play a big part in creating a Wrangler. But it's the workforce that's the heartbeat of Jeep. A Wrangler doesn't get built without the skilled tradespeople and workers. UAW Jeep Unit Committeeman Tim Alexander talks more about the special relationship between Jeep and its workforce. I mean, the workers, you know, it's it's they're 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 dedicating more time with with Jeep than they do with their own families. You know, they're here. We were on a 10-hour schedule for the longest time. Uh, we're currently working nine hours, but you're talking, you know, 50, 60 hours a week, and the people are dedicated. You know that that line fires up here, and it, it it just rock and rolls, and the jeeps are pumped out one a minute. I don't care how many robots you build, there's still hundreds and hundreds of jobs they can't do, and uh, the, the workers, thank goodness, because that keeps them working, keeps their. Uh, you know, money coming in for the families and, and, and enables them to live a great quality of life. Well, the, the, the pride is, you know, just, just knowing that you're, you know, you're, you're driving an icon. It's just awesome to drive by somebody else with a, a Wrangler and, you know, throw up a couple fingers and it's just, you know, it's, it, it's that sense of coolness, you know, that I'm a, I'm a Jeep owner and, and I'm, I'm driving, you know, something that everybody out there seems to want because we're just, uh, can't make enough of them. It's awesome. Jeep owners are a breed under their own. And that special wave, well, that's just part of the Jeep thing. Jeep buyers even have their own um, wave. They call it a Jeep wave. And as soon as you see that, you pull, pull up next to somebody in the parking lot or whatever, or you happen to be somewhere out in the community, and, and it's an instant starter, conversation starter. Hey, where'd you get those tires, that type of things? You lifted it up, how you like that? Or you got the different engine than what I had. And, and it just continues to roll. And, or where'd you get that part? And they, the custom shops and, and jacking them up and, and taking them off road. Or, and, and with the Jeep Parade and the Jeep Fest, that brings everybody together. And I'm sure there's tons of stories told about all the Jeep different events that have taken place and where they've taken their Jeep in comparison to somebody else. All right, Jeep geniuses, do you know what a Jeep CJ stands for? Is it A, civilian Jeep, B, current Jeep, or C, 
custom Jeep. The answer to that, and we'll continue on with the building of a Jeep Wrangler tour at the Toledo Assembly Complex on 419 by Design. What does a Jeep CJ stand for? If you guessed civilian Jeep, you're right. Now that the Wrangler body and chassis are put together, it's time for fluid fill. It's here where all the fluids for the Wrangler are added. Seat installation. The addition of the hardtop. and the addition of four very important items, the tires. All right, we're gonna give, we're gonna give Lori a break. We're making you come in. I'm Keisha Grant and I am a supervisor. All right, Keisha, tell us what we're looking at. We're looking at tires when we put our tires on, on our Wranglers. And so right now my employee is actually mounting the tires on the car. He's hand starting it. And then that machine over here actually completely mounts it on. And you're not, these are all different tires. These right? are all different tires based on the customer's demands and needs. Earlier in the process, the doors were made, then removed in store to protect them. It's at this point they go back on. Each right and left door is brought down the line to match each vehicle. And now the moment of truth. The Wrangler has gone through all the steps in the process to become a vehicle. And right here, a Jeep is born right here at Drive Off. All right, here it is. They're officially a car, is that right? That's right, All you're right, at so Drive Off. They've run it through electrical tests. They've gone down the final line, added everything to make it a finished Jeep. Now they're ready to drive it off and begin some special testing to ensure that the vehicle is functioning as it should and that aesthetically everything is as it should be. From here, the newborn Wrangler goes through a series of rigorous tests, including the rolls test, a liner test, water test, and the certification line. But first, one last check to make sure everything's in order. Hi, what's your name and what do you do here? My name is Anthony Singer and I'm the team leader of Reprocess. All right, tell me what's going on here right now. Right now, you're coming through the, you, we have the vision system, 
and we have the robots. The vision system are, is checking all of the badges on the car, which is like this, for instance, this vehicle, Willys, and all the badges and make sure it has all the correct badges. It's taking pictures of that complete car, okay. making sure everything is good. And then you have the robot system, which is checking all the gaps in between the doors, the fenders, the hood, making sure that everything is suspect on the vehicle. Because once it comes down to the end of the line, we buy the cars off and send them forward. So this, is, this serves multiple purposes. This is where we put the first mile on the car, but within that first mile, we're checking the vehicle for all the electrical, engine, transmission, brakes, all of those functions. We plug that into a computer, make sure everything is working good, and if it passes, the computer will send the car forward to a liner. All right, cool, so you're checking everything there, you're checking everything here, off it goes. Yes, this is the process of, of the first process of the car being shipped out, out the door. Now that the tires and the body have been tested, it's here the mechanics check that everything is in order, both above and below the vehicle. It's here that workers are closely checking both the engine and alignment. Next stop for the Wrangler on the way out the door, the water test. It's here that the Jeep is tested to make sure it's water resistant and sealed properly. Well, right now you're going through water tests. So all of the vehicles, 100% of them go through water test. When they drive it off the aligners, they get out, they check the seals, they check all the doors, make sure everything looks correct. Then it goes through water test. That's very important for a Wrangler because you have removable top, you have removable doors, you have a windshield that folds down. So it's not like your everyday car. So we check 100% of every vehicle to ensure that they're leak free. All right, Jeep aficionados, without cheating, do you know how many slots there are on that iconic Wrangler grill? Is it A, five, B, eight, or C, seven? The answer to that, and we'll take the final steps of the tour and see a Wrangler being born after the break on 419 by Design. How many slots on that iconic Wrangler grill? If you remembered or guessed seven, you're right. We're down to one last step before a Wrangler heads out to the dealership. All right, Lori, here we are at the proverbial end of the line. What's yep. going on? So we've been through the functional checks and the cert line, ensuring the quality is correct. Now the vehicles are heading out the door for one last test on the BSR track. They'll drive them looking for bump, squeak, and rattles, BSR. After that, they'll head out to be sent to the dealers via either a semi-truck or on a rail car. And with that, another Jeep Wrangler is sent off into the world. And as we've seen, the iconic Wrangler is so much more than just a car. It's a rolling representation of countless hours of hard work, craftsmanship, skill, passion, and Toledo pride.
to build an iconic brand as we have here. And, and the good people that we have in Toledo, um, they're craftsmen and, and they do a great job with uh, building Jeeps and continuing their heritage and hopefully we'll be able to continue with that and our grandsons and granddaughters will have an opportunity to work here as well and continue the legacy. There really is a lot of pride involved in, in, in the Jeep, Jeep name and, the, and, and people just, you know, it's a lot of folks out there that, uh, that build other Jeeps want to say, you know, that, uh, that they're the home of the Jeep, but we all know Toledo is the home of the Jeep. It originated here. It always will be the home of the Jeep, and uh, hopefully it's here forever.